Hello, everybody, and welcome in to our second episode. We've got a lovely show for you tonight. That's me and Connor. We've got a couple of special guests. Well, one not so special. I'll let you be the, be the judge as to who that is. But first up is Olaf Meister to talk us through a couple of rounds that he played. And then we'll go into a CS Money segment where Connor will rant along about the skins that he loves. And then finally, we'll have Nicholas Estrup to come, out, come on and talk about the first week of Blast. Stay tuned to Blast Overtime. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching uh, the games today. Uh, Olaf Meister was one of five players today who made quick work of the second series just so that we get, get home in time to watch the Super Bowl. Isn't that right, Olaf? Yeah, that's what Janko wants to do, so we have to <laughs> listen to our coach. Yeah, he's a, he's a big uh, football fan, right, yeah, these days. Is. Uh, so we have Olaf on today, and also we can't forget about Connor in the Crimson hey. Red, matching with uh, my purple outfit. We yeah. like to kind of stay in tune style You set the bar high. I try to hang on. Well, thank you so much. I don't know if I deserve that uh, that praise. But uh, today we've got a couple of rounds that Olaf played. And what we bring to this show that's a little bit more interesting um, than just watching a demo is we want to, if Olaf can remember, watch the rounds that Olaf played and have Olaf talk about what went on in that round. Um, we'll start with round nine on Mirage. It's a round where you guys lose the man advantage early on. Overall, spoilers, they won the series 2-0. <laughs> but after, after this round, you actually lose the first kill and then make a rotation over towards B. You're already in the B site and you get a couple of kills. And I was wondering, why is it that you guys realize that you should rotate over? So we're going to start from the opening kill here just to set the stage. Rain goes down early. What's the communication, if you remember, uh, about I remember why you rotated? Short, we weren't sure if they could be short. And uh, no, OK, late round, we, not, we won't remember if they could be short. So Brookie come and help, and he's going to hold short for me if I remember this round correctly. So Nick is always like he. Nico most of the time has short for us, so we don't have to focus on that too much. And when he, he can't stay in connector anymore, like you see, Brook is coming back now when Nico rotated away from short when our connector, when we don't know they can be there. And we did the right call. And it's also a little bit of Brook here, like what he feels. And now everything is just going perfect. So it's like basically here I'm going off of Nico's comms there? Yeah, and now me and Brook are playing really good because I said I had the EPS and I couldn't have it anymore. So we swapped, like he was holding short before that, and then we swapped. And Nick was also really good with the uh, comms, saying how many people were up short. So we knew pretty much where everyone was. And it's just when we get confidence, like we've been getting, like after every prac, like 2020 started off really, really good for us in practice. I think we were like 25 and 0 in something in prac. Yeah. And um, yeah. and the only one we lost to was Astralis, basically, in like one. one no or two shame minutes. in that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we said. But about. You, yeah, but you know what? Like it feels like who is losing in practice? Because it feels like everybody's having a good boot camp. Yeah, that's true. But not everybody's playing well in the matches. Yeah. So who are you guys playing? Uh, I mean, everyone plays everyone. It's like some lower, lower tier teams that me personally, like, you don't really care if you win or lose against them. Mm -hmm. You're just trying out stuff. But some of the other, like when we had a bad patch, we're trying to take practice a little bit more serious. You get back your like comfort zone and confidence and all that stuff. So we're playing. Everyone, like we play Astralis, we play Nip, we play Fnatic. Not Fnatic now because they haven't, I don't think they started yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just all top teams. Basically. You had a great series today. Okay, that 1v2 had everybody silenced. All, we actually had the comms from that round as we came back from the break on Dust2. Mm -hmm. you, you popped up, you killed that guy in window. Are you feeling it right now? Like, are you in the, are you in the flow state? Are you in the zone? Uh, no, not yet, because we just changed zones. But uh, I think everyone else in my team, I'm feeling more and more confidence. And I like to be, mm -hmm. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> but I like to be this kind of role more than being the upper, especially on T side, uh, because I feel like I can give more, I can help more to Nick and to the team and say what's happening over the map. And like, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at listening to what's happening all over the map and to take, uh, take the risk when you need to do it and, and like fall back when you need to do it. Yesterday, there was a few times when you were playing through tunnels. Again, we talked about like playing this Lurk role, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you were getting owned. You got caught a few times by, by Liquid's pushes into tunnels. Mm -hmm. So did, did you feel a bit more comfortable today coming back into <sighs> Dust2? Yeah, but like one of the times it was like Dust2 started off 
even though we won it, we weren't happy with how we played it because we were like really chaotic in the start of the game. And that's something we're trying to work on because in practice we're always like a lot more calmer. And we're trying to bring that into official, right? And like being the first like big game for us this year, it became a little bit uh, chaotic. But then, so some of the rounds, like one of the rounds when I'm doing one way, is like a lot of comms going back and forth was happening. And it just went bad in that way. But yeah, uh, just bad timing and stuff like that. So it didn't affect me that much. There, I don't know if you remember this, but this was a round where like uh, you and Twist were having this this battle at long where you kind of, you, you're taking on the lurk role as was mentioned, and uh, you found a good timing to push out of long doors and you kill Twist at top mid. Right, it was an F, but yeah, yeah. Oh, it was an F at top yeah, mid? Yeah, it was okay, holding yeah. me all the time, yeah, was, I know it, was it just you knew, you knew exactly what the timing was or did he give any clue away as to like why he was there? No, but it, like you have to look at the time and all that stuff, like if I'm gonna push, I had to push then and I was like, you kind of know when they're like going out A, if they don't have a lurk in lower, for example, the guy's gonna be, someone has to hold short and I, I have to like decide if I'm gonna fall back or push at that time, and mm -hmm. it was, I think I had a good timing, obviously, because he was holding along the whole time, but just a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. Yeah, so the role changes are looking great. I actually wanna like dive into this a little bit more now that we have you. I wanna ask you like a little bit of a deeper question here. What kind of player are you now? In you know, when we talk about Olaf, and when people criticize you online, they always bring up the Olaf that was the major winning Olaf, the Olaf that was top fragging, the Olaf that was taking a lead, the Olaf that has every spot on every map named after him, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But you're clearly a different player and person these days, yeah. and you're on a team that you clearly trust with a lot more responsibility. How do you define yourself as a player? And what do you, what, how do you feel about the way that people talk about you as that player that you used to be? I mean, it's fun that people still talk about it, and I think people think that I can get back to what I was, but I don't think that's possible because of the injury I had, and that's something I took me a little bit longer to realize. And then, for me, it's just about winning, and I don't care how I do it or which I do it with, or who I do it with, mm -hmm. I mean. And then I have to like accept that and look at what I can do best for the team and what I can do with what I have, like I don't have the same aim like I had back then and, and stuff like that. And then I have to realize that and like try to find other ways to help the team and all this stuff. And yeah. that's just like find every possible way you can help the team with. And um, nowadays I'm more like the more, I'm not a support support, but I'm trying like, I'm trying to be the more support guy in this team. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously still all off my screen. <laughs> like, let's not get that wrong. And to talk about that, we have actually a really fantastic round from Brokey to look at where he played well. He was in tandem with you on the B site, kind of a good friend to have as a rotator. Yeah, yeah. He made his way over the B site a lot. Here's oh, one round where oh, he was oh, just oh, so is, quick with up. it on the op. Oh, Do you sorry. remember this? I, I fucked up. I fucked cold this round. <laughs> okay. Uh, this that? flash, I flashed. This is, he gets white by my oh, flash. Oh, okay. So I. If we lost this round, it would have been on me. And right. then I got bad, put in a bad position, uh, and then the Brookie, yes, yeah. Thank you, Brookie, I would say. Oh my uh, goodness, look how this fast is, this is. This kid is something special, man. I, I wanted to ask about him, because I mean, this is the thing, he is, he is surrounded by legends, right, yeah. all around. And so we kind of have this conversation where he just slots in, but it's not often that the new upcoming player is the one that's kind of in the shadows, right? Yeah. So it's hard to talk about him, and, and we've had some like limited interactions with him, Mohan and I. He seems cold, man. Almost like Nafli in that sense, where it's just like he's unshakable. So you're talking about how you want to come into officials with like a nice, calm, collected type of attitude. He must add to that. I mean, Cole, uh, or sorry, uh, Brook is a really calm guy in general, but it's like his unreal talent, and uh, he's just one of those guys that can do everything. And then whatever you put him in, he will do it correctly. Like if you put him on anchor on a B site and train, he will do everything right. If you put him on off, as you, he's like unreal. It's just about now the only thing we need to learn him, like he, he just understand the game on another level and uh, we can't really learn him that much about the game. We can learn him some stuff about team play and all this stuff, but he needs experience. That's what he mostly needs. Mm. Right. And with that, he will become more calm in game. Sometimes he gets a little bit hyped and like want to do something like really, really fast and it will take a little bit of time, but it is, that's what he needs. He just needs time and he will become even better. Already now he's a star in my eyes and he will just become better and better with more and more confidence. Yeah, I can believe that. And you know what? I, uh, people were saying, like you brought up in the cast, that like maybe you can't look as Brokey as like a player who will be a star player because of the players that's played around him. But if you look at Rain, he came onto your team and became the best player on the team when everybody on the team at the time already was better than him from their previous stats, their previous lineups when they, they had come on. Like Rain was a star player on LGB a long time ago, much smaller scenes for him, but he showed up 
and showed everyone who was boss, right? Like, do you believe that Brokey could be that same guy? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, now when he like has a bigger role and where he can take more in, I don't know the word in English. Like, Responsibility? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then do more stuff that he, that he wants to do because when he was playing on the side, he was like a little bit too much not uh, going for it when you needed him to do it mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like that. So now he's going with other guys and he has more responsibility and he's thriving. I, I mean, he does everything right and he hits some crazy shots. Like some of the runs from Mirage, he just won for us. Yeah. Like really important runs. That clutch that he took and also the B run, which you guys showed, but it was another run on T side on B where he owned like three guys that yeah, was really yeah. important. And we could have had his clips, but you're better at speaking, so we wanted to have <laughs> him on the show. No, no. Well, thank you so much, Olaf, for being on with us. No. Uh, cheers, cheers and thank we'll you. make sure to drink. Remember, yesterday I actually forgot to take a sip. And that'll be the Lots end of, of this segment. We're going to go and move on to CS Money shot style. Once again, thank you so much, Olaf, for being on. We're going to take a look at some fantastic skin loadouts and really let uh, Connor go ham here, because Connor got a very special segment, don't we? Yeah, I do. Uh, so you're free to go, bro. Okay, don't worry about you. that one. <laughs> <laughs> CS money shot style. Mohan, you still have your face on the uh, the intro screen. We should change that. I'm trying we? to take that over. You know, we're working on it step by step. But what we wanted to do today was take a take a look at two people's inventories like we did yesterday. So, listen, if you're here for the hardcore CS, you take a back seat in this moment. We're talking skins, all right? We know there's people out there yeah. that are enthusiastic about it, maybe a little bit too much. But the first inventory we're going to talk about is, I believe, mine. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't That's we pull right. it up, man? Not Take a pro charge player. Of the segment. I want to. Uh, ooh, I wanted. I wanted to give you guys a bit. Of, a bit of an example of mine here, right? Listen, some pro players. They've got those tournament winnings. They've got their monthly salaries. So they're just. They're just going for the max. But this. This is building while broke. Okay. And we talked about the basis. The basis of most skin collections. It's going to start with knives and gloves. And me. Listen, I'm no city slicker like Launders, okay? Yeah. I'm not some suburb kid. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm talking, I'm talking rural Canada. So yeah. I went with that natural looking outdoorsy type right. stuff. Right, you're blending in outside. You start with the forest DD pat. If they can't see you, they can't kill you, right? That's <laughs> okay. my mantra. So uh, that's, that's where I start this with. It's all based around the gloves, okay? What I want you guys to take note of, it's the trim. The gold trim on the fingers there, that's where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. That's what's pulling triggers. So the Huntsman vanilla knife, well, it's got that same look. It's not you're you're not combining colors. It's very stripped down, Connor. It What's is, man. It's that? all you see. You see the combinations of blacks and greens and gold. That's that's me. That's my that's my color combination. All right. That's what I like to work with. So the Huntsman Vanilla. It's outdoorsy. The Forest DD Pat. You see the connection. Now the key piece is that AK Jaguar. Right. I love T side. That's okay. where I feel like I thrive. Kind of an entry. So you go with the camo and the gloves, the camo and the Jaguar. I actually call mine the AK-47 Predator. Whoa, we should have had name tags as a part well, of this segment. Well, listen, maybe. man, we're going to bring that in for season we're two. We're ramping up the segments as they go, right? Yeah. This is uh, this is the first weekend of the CS uh, Money Shots. Let style. me cut you off real quick. What is the pronunciation of this famous? The gym. The or the gin. The gin. Yeah, okay, either yeah, way, it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a mystical beast, something along the lines of, say, uh, a genie. Right is what I believe it is. If you if you get a zoom up on it, which we won't have, it's uh, it's got some really cool cool like creature going right above the magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, but point being, right, everything here is just about that gold trim. So this is where you can you can slip in some style without dropping fat stacks for diamonds and rubies and emeralds and sapphires yeah. and all those whatever not skins, Mohan. You know the Desert Eagle Pilot. Another prime example. That's from the baggage collection. Did you know the baggage map even had a collection? I actually did know that. Okay, I know something this about skins. Lying. There's an AK that has all of the passport stamps yeah, on the it, jet if I'm not set. mistaken. There the AK-47 jet You can jet test set. me, man. Overall, yeah. I'm liking the setup so, quite a the bit. So the reason I wanted to throw mine up here was for two reasons. I wanted to show you guys that you don't need to be dropping fat stacks to make cool collections of skins, right? Uh, and secondly, I want to start that narrative towards talent skins because I know that I'm proud of mine. Uh -huh. I know some people are slouching out there. Am I'm talking I, about you, Moses okay. first and foremost, man. He left himself logged in on the caster PC. I was kind of looking through that. <laughs> Gotta say, if he doesn't step up his game, yeah. we're gonna scrutinize him. Okay. But there's also guys like James Bardolph. So it's it's a big spectrum when it comes to talent. Um, and then secondly, we're gonna bro, go ahead and throw up another uh, player inventory. And this is, I think, like a stark alternative to what I just showed, which is yeah. kind of being cool with subtlety. And that's gonna be Twists. Twists is one of these, one of these uh, flashy guys. We don't have like the, the most flashy skins in this collection, 
Because he does have a lot of like uh, Dopplers and He's saving teams. money here on the Karen bit Brightwater. Yeah. Isn't but that true? It is, but you see, this is what he does. So the reason I throw two sets of gloves up is because he's one of these guys who, first of all, has more than one sets of gloves. That's a big um, move. So his hand wraps, the overprint, that's what he's going to be playing on T side. Couples very nicely, obviously, with the Aquamarine Revenge. He's got that turquoise blue type going. And uh, the Brightwater is one of his newest knives. He's got like four or five. Right. Obviously, again, you see that color palette coming out on the T side. CT yeah. side, sports glove so, arid. Kind of subtle. Can I ask you a yellow. question? Is this is this a symptom of there not being a better option for the knife to match with the AK and the gloves? That this is the closest that you can get? Or is this the ideal color scheme for this setup? I mean, I think it's one of them. Because again, we, we talk about either like bejeweled skins, the Dopplers that are made to look like gemstones, right. or you get hand painted, right? Mm -hmm. And the Brightwater has that like matte finish to it. So um, I think in this case, there are, you could argue, better options. But I also like the subtlety of the color matching. Look inside of the bright water. Look deeper. <laughs> right, Take between a moment. the bright water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's that light little tidbit at the end of it. And uh, he does the same thing with the M4 Howl and the Arid Gloves. You got the yellow, the orange of the wolf. Matches real nicely with the hands. Look at the heirloom. I do the same thing with my Desert Eagle Pilot. It's that gold trim that you're trying to combine to your glove skin. Not just a play-by-play -play caster, but skin enthusiast. Listen. I would like you guys to realize that, yes, we are looking at a sponsor segment. Of course. You guys are not fools. But he does truly love it's, his skin. And it's something that uh, I know that there are other people out there, right? Like, you can you can be a big Counter-Strike, like a competitive CS enthusiast, and that's why you tune into games. But I know that some people just love seeing their inventories when it comes to playing Counter-Strike 2. So uh, I actually want to take this, this moment to not only thank CS Money for making this segment possible, but also to say, if anybody out there wants me to take a closer look to any skins, their favorites, if you guys want to shoot me your inventories. And you be know, judged. Yeah, I'll talk about some combinations. We have two more weeks of this segment, so uh, you know where to find me twitter.com forward slash scrawny cg wow nice got a plug in there slide as well. in the dms yes and we are going to set up our next guest his name his bald his bald headed name is nicholas estrup he knows all the best barbers in london funnily enough hey, he is also the head of the director of Exper product and experience at blast did i get that right nicholas no oh damn it almost okay Will you tell us then so that's it Thanks for now. It was great being. Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, I'm not walk off. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Sorry. Can we get a correction on the title? I, I thought I had. It is director it. of product and experience. It's fine. Oh, it's it is. Okay. I'm no, just yeah, lying. Works. Just, yeah. Okay. Leaving mouth to dry. Good. All right. Well, I appreciate Sorry, that, Mohan. Nicholas. Nicholas, we're wrapping up this first week of Blast. I know. Yeah. It was. It was awesome. I think it was well received. <clears throat> it was such a fun thing to be a part of for us casting. People thought that we bought the audience, right? We had we had people on both sides, like by our casting, that were so overly amped. There was just this back and forth between the Team Liquid fans, the face yeah. fans, each day, and it was such like a nice organic, synergistic experience. And uh, we loved it. And the studio for for like kind of a league, it, it seems to be just the best way to do it. Are you very ha are you happy with how things have gone? I'm super happy. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed. Just a comment. We obviously haven't bought. Anyone. Yeah. <laughs> we even had to. They paid Except you. us. What yeah. happens yeah. when these games are live is that we always write to each other, production truck, et cetera, et cetera. We had to turn down the crowd noise because they were so close to you, it's just too loud. So I think people at home just got crazy with the chanting right in your head. So not bought, all real. Good. Uh, but no, I'm overwhelmed and happy and tired and two more weeks to go, but excited for that as well. I think with all these changes that we've worked on ever since we talked about what we wanted to do end of earlier in, uh, or end of last year and actually doing it now and seeing it come to life is just exciting. There was like things that I had only hoped would come at some point like yeah. Taco in the player tunnel, slicing his throat, all these classical things and sport moments that all of a sudden just happened. Yeah. Day one. <laughs> right, and this is this is something that you okay. take a lead on, right? And I just want to talk about that for a second, <clears throat> sure. Because you, you know, the, there's always the conversation in esports. We're talking to an audience that really knows what they're watching, right? Mm. Um, these conversations they understand, and basically, there's always this discussion between um, addressing kind of core fans, people who know Counter Strike, that live <clears throat> and yeah. breathe Counter Strike. You know, people like Sponge. You know what I mean? That's all they think yeah. about day in and day out is like what games are happening, what's the analysis of the match. But then there's also the the, the stuff that's below the water in the iceberg, right? The, 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 just the general fan that might pop in and want to be entertained, you know? The, re yeah. 
The reason that we have segments like this, like Betway dart segment that you see in the in the sure. ads, that's so fun to watch, but not necessarily Counter Strike. Yeah. And I know from you <clears throat> that you really appreciate the thought that goes into segments like that. What is? How have you brought that to Blast? And like, what's your what's your general take on on that with tournaments? Do you think it's like too serious of a vibe sometimes? Is Blast trying to change that a little bit? I think we might have become that. With almost uh, without thinking about it too much. I think when we had our first event back in 2017, that was obviously a chaotic period, getting that over the edge and, and out into real life. And I think ever since then, we've wa walked this like narrow path of do we go very hard into like the mainstream open doors to everyone, mm -hmm. or do we want to like dive back and forth a bit more? And I think we went heavy on the mainstream side. Mm -hmm. And I think it was necessary in the beginning probably just to stand out look different feel different um, but I then think that the realization just came that it's not that easy right you can't just lean too much to one or the other directions it's like a constant balance in a dance right mm -hmm. and I think it's the same with when you see Duncan's beautiful rant in the message <laughs> yeah stuff like that is so core and and so counter-strike and so the community that we have and I think we just need to lean into that more I think we have a social media team that I'm very, very proud of and think has done phenomenal work all weekend. And I think it's those things like, don't be afraid to lean into the meme trends that are going on. Mm -hmm. um, allow you, the talent, to be able to have a looser setup to work within. Mm -hmm. And especially for some, Duncan obviously needs a lot of space to be <laughs> loose, which is great because then his character is perfect for what we're trying to do. Yeah. But then do stuff like this where we kind of we go both ways, right? It's the mainstream part that makes it look big and, and fancy, and then we bring all the core into kind of ground and even, ground it, and even, even, yeah. even it out. Yeah. yeah, it's just like a symbiotic relationship, right, <clears throat> that you're trying to strike a balance with. Exactly. You're, you're, you're the guy who a lot of people don't know used to play with Danny, or should I say Zonic? Yeah. You guys are probably on a first name basis at one point. He was <laughs> at one point? At one point, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, I know if that's changed yeah. actually. It's too now. cool now. He's Not written anymore. a book. Where's your book? I read his book. You read, I read his book. And I was yeah. like, can't wait for him to mention me. And like, oh, great, good read. I wasn't Listen, I thought it at your all. English is pretty good. Where's the translation? <clears throat> I don't know. You can make money doing that. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe yeah. I'll read his book and then say where I should have been in it. Yeah, I never see you working, so you might have a little extra time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. shots fired. Uh, no, I think Danny is obviously one of my dear friends, and I think his journey has been crazy. Uh, so has ours. I come from back in the day where. A lot of the inspiration for things we wanted to do here is from that era as well. Mm -hmm. Give an example of that. But for Danny and the time that we were in, I remember when he got his first salary, like proper salary. Uh, I don't know if I can say this. So Danny, I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to, to say this. But it was something actually, to the lines of like- I got him on like, the line. He said it's fine. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I think he got something like a thousand dollars or euros a month. And back then- That's pretty good. Well, back then we were like, Holy shit, this is like big leagues. <laughs> yeah. You made it, you're set for life, I'm so happy for you. Like right. all this, everything was great. Don't touch me. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mandel over here, but he's the bald one. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, but when, when that happened, every one of us in this friend group in, in that community were ecstatic. It was like a huge moment. Mm -hmm. And look at him now, it's bonkers to think about just what happened since. So yeah. I think me and my role back then is that I was never as good. Danny was like 10, 15 times, 100 times better than I. Right. And I ended up in this weird, I think every, there's one of those in all of these like pro level friend groups that not really good, really great friend to have around. And at some point you have to figure out, okay, I'm not going to play this professionally. What do I do? So I just ended up filming Danny and the other teams as they went to tournaments. And that's how all of this started. Right. Well, tying that into like what you do <laughs> and things getting a little bit too fun sometimes at Blast, we had a lot of fun colors in the HUD. Oh, yeah. Yes, but that's something that's changed a little bit over mm -hmm. time as, as stuff has started to get whittled down a bit. Yeah. What can we talk about when it comes to this new HUD in terms of how much easier it is to digest for the viewer? I think the challenging thing with the HUD is that if you, if you just think of it on like a, a base level, what is its purpose? It was initially made for you to be able to have a good time with the game sitting very close to the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Everything was tailored for the playing person. And I think that is uh, obviously something where now when you want to show it to a lot of people that don't play the game, may have never played the game, or played it and, and are familiar with it, but you, know, you still don't need all that information. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a matter of <clears throat> figuring out which elements could we break apart. I remember the first session we ever had, it was actually Anders and I. We just took a picture of the CSGO HUD as is, 
and then we just put post-it notes all around the screen mm. with things that we should think about removing or changing, right? Because I think when you look at... So you can, you're saying you can do this with very limited technology if you're at home? Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. yes. It doesn't take much to, to come clear, up with some anybody good Anybody can do this. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty of it was that I think when you look at this, it's a good image, right? You want the game to be what takes up the most space. Mm -hmm. And I think we see that as real estate, real estate on the screen. And our biggest challenge is making sure that the real estate of the game itself takes the most space at all times. Mm -hmm. And then there's obviously times where we want to fit in a sponsor, we want to show some statistics and stuff like that. But that should, of course, be tailored into the right moments. Mm -hmm. So I think there's obviously been custom huts before, but we wanted to, one, go in another direction. I think with this one, we have you know the minimap with the heads instead of just the numbers, and I know our observers hated us the first time, yeah. I'm sure, and the cast is as so well. So did we, yeah, I remember. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's the thing Connor that, like, going on about how much he hated you, actually. Yeah. He wouldn't yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. I think so this is... This has become so tense. This is one of those, this is one of the aspects, I think, of Blast. Like, I mean, we've been working with you guys for a while, yeah, yeah. where, and uh, and you're you're very active in taking feedback uh, yes. from us as well, actively looking for it. So I think that, I remember, I think it was after Blast Copenhagen mm -hmm. of last year, I must have wrote up like a three, four page document yeah, with it. images of like, listen, this needs to go, this needs to change. I love that the gradient's gone. Yep. I'm not going to lie, because like, first of all, there's no denying that the colors are vivid with Blast. Yeah. And I like that. Uh, but I I didn't like when it was like too many colors, you know, like no. each bar being two. That was gone. That's nice. It was too much. The uh, obviously for us casters, you know, we have the we have the in-game PC, so we yep. can still commentate off of the numbered um, heads on yep. the mini map. So that's nice to have. I think from a viewer's <laughs> perspective, it's maybe not as important because it's more still of a passive, yeah, yeah. you know, digesting. Um, but I think the problem is if we can get it back on the screen, just to help clarify. I think if you look at the mini map, right? Yeah. It's a 2D representation of a 3D space, right? And that even for us that have played the game, you know, we understand it. Yes, I understand where they are, what they're most likely doing. But even I, as, as someone who's watched it for many, many years, I don't always look at it. Mm -hmm. It's not like my go-to thing, right? And I think for a new viewer, figuring out how to make a quick and easy connection of the 2D and the 3D space, I think that's the hardest task we have over everything in the HUD. Mm. And that's why we wanted to play around with the heads, because if we can put the heads down in the player-specific bars, put them up in the minimap, then we at least try to do that connection, right? Because I think as a mainstream user, you're not going to watch, oh, great, Coursera 7. Let me find 7 up on that map, and then I know where he is, then the round is over, mm. right? So, I mean, we're talking about 2D and 3D, but if we talk about 4D for a second, Nicholas, oh, we are out of time. So oh, that's that going to be the end of the show. Okay. I want to thank you so much for coming on. Hope you're to welcome. have you on as a guest in the future. And I just want you to know, I don't care what anyone says about you, Nicholas, I think you're a pretty cool guy. Thank, Thank you so you. much for talking about on. as if I'm hated. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's always a good sign, I think, when we can poke fun at our it friends. Is. It is, it is. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, we're open to feedback. Hit us up on all the socials and uh, make sure to roast Nicholas at Nicholas Estrup. That's it from me and Connor. You guys, see you tomorrow. Or, not, sorry, not tomorrow. See you next week for the next Blast Overtime. You're all fired. <laughs> <laughs> we still on for lunch tomorrow? No. <laughs>